Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Ryan. If Ryan and I look familiar, it's because we've been coming on PEG TV for the last few years to talk about radon gas. You may remember that January is National Radon Action Month, so this time of year we'd like to come on and share our knowledge with you about the dangers of long-term exposure to radon gas. Long-term exposure to radon gas is the number one cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. Radon is invisible, odorless, and tasteless. It is naturally occurring radioactive gas that is released from decaying uranium. It is prevalent in rocky areas with slate and granite. It rises through the soil and gets trapped inside your home. Radon is also site-specific, which means uh, one house could be eleva have elevated levels and the next house next door might be fine. And radon levels naturally fluctuate too, right? Yes, radon levels naturally rise and fall throughout the day and are affected by the time of year, temperature, building ventilation, how porous the soil is, and even uh, how the building is constructed. So what you're saying is that radon gas is naturally occurring, radioactive, and can be in my home. Does that mean that we're breathing radon right now? Yes, there's radon gas everywhere. Even when we're outside, we're breathing small amounts of radon. And when we're inside, radon can accumulate in uh, dangerous levels. How prevalent is radon gas? One in 15 homes in the United States has elevated levels of radon, with one in seven homes having elevated levels here in Vermont. Ryan, in your professional opinion, what is the most common misconception people have regarding radon? Yeah, so people often uh, tell me, you know, I have an old house, it's very drafty, um, there's no way that the radon levels can be high in there. Or they, on the other side, they might say, um, you know, my house is very new, only a few years old. Um, you know, I highly doubt that the radon is going to be high. Um, the truth is, uh, with old houses, um, even if they're very drafty, those drafts can actually uh, create a vacuum effect that can um, increase the levels of radon in the house. Um, and then with uh, newer houses, um, you know, since radon is a gas, it can come through, uh, you know, it takes a path of least resistance. It can come through a small hairline crack, you know, invisible to the naked eye and enter the uh, house. You know, uh, radon is uh, site specific, so the only way to tell if um, uh, your levels are low is to test. Jeff D. from West Rutland wants to know why radon is so deadly. Thanks, Jeff. Well, uh, we're going to go into more detail about how radon can uh, cause lung cancer uh, further along in our presentation, uh, but I will give you an uh, analogy. Um, so think of your fragile lung tissue as a wet tissue paper. Um, the uh, radon decay byproducts, uh, which cause the most harm to, a, um, to your lung tissue, uh, are the, a bowling ball bashing up against the tissue paper. Um, that repeated damage to the lung tissue uh, can eventually cause lung cancer. Wow. So well, thanks for summarizing that, Ryan. Uh, now that we understand more about the dangers of long-term radon exposure, let's look at some statistics about radon in schools. The EPA estimates that one in five schools in the nation has at least one schoolroom with a radon level above the action level of four picocuries per liter. So an estimated 70,000 plus schoolrooms in, in use today have high radon levels. Long-term exposure to radon gas can lead to lung cancer. Uh, so the exposure is cumulative. If your home has radon, your office has radon, your children's school has radon, your college dorm, your vacation home, all have elevated levels of radon. This adds up over the course of your lifetime. So as Ryan discussed earlier, uh, radon does not actually cause lung cancer. It's the decay products from radon gas. So when uranium decays, it releases radon gas. So the radon gas is rising up through the soil and gets trapped inside your house. And when the radon gas decays, it turns into polonium. So polonium, it's still invisible, odorless, tasteless, but it's actually a solid. And it's floating around in the air in your house, attaching, or in your school, attaching to dust particles, and is inhaled. 
Now, when polonium decays, it releases alpha radiation, and that's that bowling ball that Ryan was talking about against your lung tissue. That alpha radiation striking your fragile lung tissue repeatedly um, causes physical and chemical damage to your DNA, which can lead to lung cancer. So let's take it back to Ryan for a moment. Uh, Ryan, now that we know more about the dangers of radon in schools, uh, can you explain why it's okay for students to continue to attend school even after high radon levels have been found? Sure. So exposure to radon is not an immediate health risk. The lung cancer risk from radon takes uh, place over many years of exposure. In addition to this, the student, uh, the school is a student's secondary exposure to radon. Since students spend more time in their homes, uh, that is their, typically their uh, primary exposure to radon. With that said, if a testing location in a school comes back elevated, follow-up action is recommended. Okay, so while exposure to high levels of radon is dangerous, it's not acute. So the risk increases over a long-term period of exposure. So far, we've learned what radon gas is, how it causes lung cancer, and how it gets into our homes. Now, let's learn how we can test for it. Well, there are a few options. There is short-term testing and long-term testing. You can also choose between passive and active devices. I'm sure there's advantages and disadvantages to both. You're right. Short-term testing is great because you get your results back pretty quick. However, it is just a snapshot in time compared to a long-term test, which really gives you a good idea of the long-term average. Short-term testing also requires house, closed house conditions, which means all windows and doors need to remain closed except for normal exit and entry during the duration of the test. Using an active device is beneficial because you can see the hourly radon levels and environmentals like temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity. A lot of active devices also have tamper-resistant features, which are important during a real estate transaction. Passive devices are just as accurate, though they provide less information uh, since you only receive the average radon level over the testing period. Uh, which would you recommend, Ryan? Well, it really depends on uh, why you're testing. People that are involved in a real estate transaction typically require fast results with lots of information, so a short-term test with an active device would uh, definitely be the way to go. However, if you are thinking about selling your home in the next few months, I would recommend conducting a long-term test in advance. Uh, this test runs under normal living conditions, so you don't have to worry about closing up your home. We brought some examples of testing devices today, so you can see what some of them look like. So this is a Rattling AirCat. It is a short-term active device. This device is ideal for real estate transactions. When you need uh, your results quickly, the data is uploaded to the lab via a Wi-Fi signal, and we receive the results in about an hour. This device takes hourly readings of the radon levels as well as uh, environmental such as temperature and barometric pressure, so it is easy to see if uh, abnormal weather uh, affected the test or if close house conditions were violated. And this is a charcoal canister from AccuStar Labs. It's a short-term passive device. While just as accurate as a continuous radon monitor, this device will only give us the average radon level over the testing period. It also takes a little longer to receive the results as we need to ship the device to the lab for analysis. An advantage to using this type of device is that it does not require power to operate. And this is a alpha track. This is a long-term passive device. The device placed under, is placed under normal living conditions for three months to a year. While you still receive only the uh, average radon level, since it is in place for a longer amount of time, it provides a more accurate idea of uh, the long-term radon levels. All right, so here's your uh, radon report. Um, kind of towards the top of the uh, first page here, is the uh, average uh, radon concentration. Um, so yours came back at a 4.9 uh, picocuries per liter. And uh, that's really the, the most important bit of information uh, in this, that's what we're, what we're really um, uh, after. Uh, if we go down a little bit below that, we can see um, the uh, hourly reading. So, so it, it gives you the reading hour by uh, hour for the uh, duration of the uh, test. Then in, um, 
Uh, page two here, you can um, see the uh, environmentals for every hour. So that is the temperature, barometric uh, pressure and humidity. And then if we go to the uh, next page here, we can see a uh, graph for both the environmentals and the, uh, and the uh, radon fluctuations. Uh, so it'll help you uh, visualize that better. Um, up top, we have the um, temperature with the uh, red line. Um, and then uh, below it, we have the uh, blue line is the uh, humidity uh, during the test. Uh, the graph in the middle is the, uh, are the radon levels, so the radon fluctuations uh, during the um, test. Um, and on the uh, bottom is the um, barometric uh, pressure. Um, so all of our tests are um, reviewed by a certified lab. Uh, they did not find anything abnormal about your, uh, your uh, test uh, when they looked at these, uh, these, uh, these uh, hourly uh, data readings. Okay, so even though, you know, I'm looking at the, the middle graph with the radon, it's, it's like squiggly up and down. Is that, that's, so that's normal? Correct, yep, so uh, radon um, natu naturally uh, fluctuates, which is another point um, on the importance of uh, running the radon test for a minimum of, uh, of uh, two days. Uh, so if we just, uh, we just took one uh, uh, recording um, while we were there, then uh, it could be a totally different uh, situation than, um, than uh, you know, even a few hours uh, um, later. Okay, so all the fluctuations are totally normal. And that's, that's like everybody's radon test is always up and down like that. Uh, correct. Okay, so 4.9 is elevated, you were saying. Uh, so what's the next step for me? So you would want to talk to a certified radon mitigator. They will inspect your home to determine the radon entry point and the best place to install the radon mitigation system. What is a radon mitigation system? So a radon mitigation system is a series of pipes and a fan that pull the radon out from under the house and vent it above the roof. A properly installed system should be able to reduce the levels down below two picocuries per liter. Will having a fan running like that all the time affect my electric bill? Um, not really any more than any other typical household system. To ensure the uh, system continues to function properly, you should conduct a uh, follow-up radon test every few years. Great. Thanks, Ryan. So we have some resources on the screen for you. To search for certified testing professionals and mitigators, you can go to the ARST NERP website. If you have any questions at all, definitely give us a call or reach out on social media. We have a ton of information that we can share with you. And if you live in the state of Vermont, uh, you can contact the Department of Health and receive a free long-term test. The link for their website is up there as well. Speaking of social media, we asked our Facebook followers if they had any questions about radon, and they came back with some good ones. So Stephen Castleton rents an apartment in a larger building and wants to know how he can test for radon. That is a great question, Steve. You can start by requesting that your landlord have the building tested. If your landlord opts for a short-term test, winter is probably the best time, so it's easier for the building occupants to keep their windows closed. If your landlord opts for a long-term test, this can run under normal living conditions for up to one year. And Steve, you could also conduct the test yourself if your landlord doesn't want to handle it. Uh, your best bet would probably be to do a long-term test. You can obtain a test kit through the state of Vermont so you would have no out-of-pocket expense. Good answer, Morgan. Uh, Mary in Stowe wants to know more about radon-resistant uh, new construction. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> uh, radon resistant homes in new construction have been rising in popularity the last few years as more people become familiar with the dangers of long-term radon exposure. So essentially contractors rough in the mitigation pipes into um, as they are building the house. Since this occurs while the house is being constructed, the cost is a lot less than having to install a mitigation system in an already constructed home. Once construction is complete and the house is tested, if elevated levels of radon are found, all you would have to do is install a fan to get that system up and running. Uh, preventative measures like uh, sealing and caulking slab penetrations and installing a polyethylene soil gas retainer can also be completed during construction. All right, and our next question comes from Josh in Burlington. Um, he messaged us to say that his old high school was recently found to have high levels of radon 
His entire family attended the school there and has never had a problem. Uh, why should he be concerned about this now? Well, that is a very relevant question, Josh. Your lung cancer risk increases over a lifetime of exposure. So while you and your family were exposed to elevated levels of radon the six or seven hours a day that you attended school, your primary exposure source is actually your residence. So if you're able, I would recommend uh, testing your childhood home for radon. And if you haven't yet, um, definitely test the home that you're currently residing in for radon. And if that comes back elevated at four picocuries per liter or above, uh, we would definitely uh, recommend installing a radon mitigation system um, because it's never too late to reduce your exposure to this preventable health risk. So I'd like to wrap things up with one more question from our Facebook followers. Uh, this one comes from Beth C. in Menden. She wants to know what is a safe level of radon gas? Thanks Beth. So even though the EPA set a uh, recommended action level for radon, there is no level of radon that is technically safe. Um, with that said, it is still important to test and mitigate when levels are elevated to uh, lessen the chance of uh, lung cancer from radon. Thank you, Ryan. So I think the important takeaway here today is that while no level of radon is safe, the risk comes from exposure over the course of your lifetime. And that when high levels of radon are found in a building, it's very easy to fix. So thank you so much for joining us today. Please reach out to us if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.